All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're in the laboratory today. We're going to be doing a laboratory called the percentage of water in a hydrate. So I guess a good place to start would be to ask the question, what is a hydrate? Well, a hydrate, in this case, the one we're going to be using today is called copper 2-sulfate pentahydrate. This is a beautiful blue crystal, and as you can see, it's a very deep blue color, and it contains water. In fact, every formula unit of copper 2-sulfate pentahydrate contains five molecules of water. And so it's going to be our job today to experimentally determine the percentage of water in a hydrate. We did this in the lecture uh, on our, in our notes, but uh, what we want to do today is compare what we got in our notes to what we're going to get experimentally to look for any kind of for any kind of error that may have occurred between what we calculate and what we actually do in the laboratory. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a measurement or, or get a mass of uh, a crucible. And a crucible is just a small vessel, a ceramic vessel just like that, that is able to withstand a large amount of heat because we're going to be heating up the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. Now I'm just going to place it onto the scale. I previously balanced the scale. And the scale, by the way, should be uh, measure up to a one hundredth of a gram. In this case, I get 12.51 grams. So I'll record that 12.51 grams as the mass of my crucible. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place a small amount of the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate onto the, uh, in, or rather into the, the vessel, the, the crucible. I'm not going to use that piece. I want to use a much smaller piece because it'll be a lot quicker and I'll get, be able to get a measurement a lot faster. So what I'm going to do is place a small piece of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate into the crucible and I'll measure once again and this time I get 12.70. So 12.70 grams for the mass of the crystal, crystal and the crucible before heating. So the next thing I need to do is set up the apparatus for heating. The ring stand is already set up for me in this case. I've got a ring clamp. All I need to do now is to add a uh, clay triangle. So clay triangle will just prevent or allow the, the heating of the crucible to take place and it will provide a platform that I can place the crucible onto. So just make sure that it's sta steady, it's stable, and there's no nothing that's going to move around during the experiment. So the, by the way, the ring stand or the ring clamp should be about, oh, two or three inches three and a half inches at the most away from the exit from the flame of your Bunsen burner. There shouldn't be any obstructions. Everything should be out of the way as you start the flame. Make sure that as you approach the, the, the apparatus that the Bunsen burner or the, the, the lever is at a 45 degree angle indicating that no gas leakage is occurring. There's no uh, impediments to gas flow in the tube itself and that uh, we should have a good flow of gas, of gas uh, into the uh, Bunsen burner. So we'll just take a match and start our Bunsen burner. Remember, when you light the Bunsen burner, you always start the match first, just like that. Now, I'm going to make a C with my body, just like that. I want to maximize the distance between the match or the flame and myself. And then I'm going to, with my opposing hand, just start the flame just like that. Just slowly start the flame, and it catches pretty quickly, just like that. I don't need a terribly hot flame, so I'll back the flame up quite a bit, that's fine. That's more than enough right there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start the warming of the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. Be very careful because of the fact that there, there's quite a bit of heat being generated by that flame. So you want to make sure that uh, you respect the amount of heat that that, that that ceramic vessel, that crucible is able to is able to absorb. So don't pick it up with your fingers by any means. It, it, may, not, it may not look hot, but believe me, it's going to get hot in just a few minutes. So the next thing is just to wait. And it'll take just a few minutes for my little copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate uh, crystal to desiccate or the water to, to leave the crystal. The, you'll, there, you'll see some noticeable changes and I'll show them to you on the, the video in just a moment. But for right now, I think the best thing to do is simply wait and just give it a few minutes allow the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate to uh, lose its water in the heat. I'll just turn it up just a bit, just like that. There we go. And as I do that, I hear a little bit of sizzling, and I see some changes. You can't see this, but I will just tell you that the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate is losing that beautiful blue color, and it's just be turning white. And I'll just use my glass stirring rod just to move it around just a little bit so that it doesn't get caught in one place. Okay, so there's going to be quite a bit of waiting in this laboratory, both waiting to heat it up 
and also waiting for it to cool down because you want to make sure that it's cool before you place the crucible back onto the weighing station for the, the, uh, the balance. So it's really starting to get white now. I'll show you that again in just a little while. And it's even starting to crumble. I'll just do that just a little bit. And it's really starting to fall apart. Okay, It's not going to take much longer. If you use a small enough crystal, it shouldn't take more than two or three minutes. But you'll know that you're done when the crystal completely falls apart. It should look like almost like ash. Okay. It's really starting to fall apart now. Be careful now. That flame is very hot. And I'll just give it a few more minutes. Okay, the key again is there's no real advantage to using a, a large crystal. So don't don't pick a, a, a large crystal out of the container that you're given. Try to find one that's not so large, you'll get the same exact results that you would have if you used a larger crystal without having to wait nearly as long. So this crystal that I have here is nearly completely disintegrated now. That blue color that we saw before is now completely gone and I'll show you that now in the video. So I'll take it off the flame. I'm going to go ahead and turn the flame off now. There's no point in having it on while I'm waiting while it's cooling and I don't want to take a chance on getting injured or having someone be injured, but I hope you can see that on the video. The copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, again, has lost that color and it's now uh, very much uh, a white ash type of, of uh, looking material. So I'm going to give that just a few minutes to cool down. Be careful about putting it on paper or any other surface that you don't want to burn because it is, it is very hot. Okay, So we'll give that a couple of minutes. Uh, just to just to cool down. And while we're doing that, we're going to do a, a couple of calculations. One of the calculations that we want to do is we want to make sure that we know how to do the calculation for uh, for determining the amount of water in the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. So there's some questions on the back of the sheet that require that we do that. This one particular one has five waters. It's a pentahydrate, so it has five waters. Would be, it would be to your advantage to memorize that water has a molecular weight of 18.02. It's 1.01 for the hydrogen. Twice that is 2.02. Add that to 16 for the oxygen, and you get 18.02. Uh, by the way, you should have a calculator handy for this particular uh, experiment. Uh, I've got one here, so I'm going to do the calculation very quickly. We have 18.02 times 5, because there are 5 of these water molecules. So that gives me 90.1. So 90.1 then is the mass of just the water alone. So I'm doing, I'm, I'm in the process of cooling this down. I'm getting experimental, I'm getting experimental data, but I also want to compare that to calculated value. So 90.1 is the mass of the water. That's the calculation that I get. Now we want to compare that in percent water because percent means part of a whole. We want to compare that to the copper sulfate pentahydrate. In other words, the whole molecule. So we have copper, which has uh, an, uh, an atomic mass or average atomic weight of, so I'll look up copper, 63.55 for copper. Sulfur would be, so find salt, sulfur on the periodic table, 32.07 for sulfur, and then oxygen would be 64.0. Why 64.0, not 16? Well, remember in the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, the formula is Cu, that's for copper, S for sulfur, O4. So there's a 4 subscript on the oxygen, so you're going to have to multiply the oxygen 16 by 4, or 64. So when we do that, we add the, that up, we get 159.62. So you can just add that up on the calculator, 159.62. So remember we're comparing the water alone to the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, which is 159.62 plus the water. That's the entire molecule. So we get 90.1 divided by 159.62 plus 0.91. Let's, let me do that calculation very quickly. Okay. 
and I get 36%. So at least theoretically, my theoretical yield for the water, or the amount of water theoretically that I should get will be 36%. So we'll, we'll look, we'll see what happens just in just a moment, and we'll calculate or determine how much water left to hydrate experimentally and compare that to what we get in our calculation, okay? Now, I've been talking for a few minutes, so be very careful as you touch the crucible. You can, you don't, don't push it hard, but you can determine just how hot it is, okay? I can see that this one, this crucible is pretty hot, and I'm just not sure that I would want that on the balance. So I'm going to wait just a few minutes before I put it on the, onto the balance. I'll move it over here just so it's a little bit closer to the balance when I get ready to move it. So I'll move it right there, okay? One of the things that we're going to want to do, be careful with this as well, we want to, one of the things that we're going to want to do is to calculate the percentage error, okay, the percent error. So make sure you know how to take experimental data and take data that we got in the laboratory or take data that we got in the laboratory and compare it to data that we calculate, okay? All right, I think that's just about ready to be moved over to the scale and we'll get a second reading, okay? So this is the reading after heating, okay? This is the amount or the mass of the, of the pentahydrate after the heating. And what I get this time is 12.62. Twelve point six two, so a bit lighter than before the heating. Twelve point six two grams. The next thing I'm going to want to do is I want to I'm going to want to heat this a second time. I won't do it on video because uh, it'll just take up extra time. But you know what I mean when I say just heat it up a second time. Go through the same uh, procedure. Make sure that the the that the uh, gas is turned on and there are no problems. Heat it a second time because you're going to want to make sure that every bit, little bit of water has exited that decahydrate, or the pentahydrate rather. So that should do it for this laboratory, percentage of water in a hydrate, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.